we have the crazy, psychotic, possibly homosexual clown returning. And we also have the crazy older brother, Illumi, as well. The ending of this episode definitely did a lot of great setup. We had a lot of reintroductions to characters and a lot of foreshadowing and setup for the future. So definitely the ending of this episode, second half for the most part of this episode, was doing some great things as far as setup goes and progressing to where things is going to head off to. The first half of the episode, for the most part, it was kind of slow, introducing the rules of this election and things of that nature. And for the most part, I'm not that big of a politics kind of guy. So for me, it wasn't all that appealing as far as like, you know, having my interest it was you know for the most part just giving us the rules and the rundown and for a bit of it i was kind of like well then you know the rules okay <laughs> so the first half of the episode it was necessary in a sense to give us exactly how it's supposed to be done natural pretty much gave everyone the finger with putting this big fucking rule that in order for the election to be valid it has to be 95 percent of the voters you know going for one particular person so it definitely is one fucking hell of a headache for this election to go through. And that's the simple version for people that didn't understand. Just all the constant talk about this election. It needs to be 95% turnout on one person. In order for it to be valid. And Nethro made it very fucking hard. Because you know people will be split in their decisions. But at the same time you can see that Jing definitely has a purpose. And the more we coming into the story. The more it's looking like Jing has an overall purpose and a goal for some of the things he's done why he just never gave a fuck seemingly for a lot of you know his son and just a lot of these life things a part of it i'm sure is because he's a journeyman he's not a guy that's gonna sit at home with his son and you know read books he's a journeyman but definitely some of the things he says in this episode is really making me wonder Maybe there's more to it with Jing. Maybe there's some, you know, possible forces out there, evil out there, things out there that he feels he needs to be there to stop or he needs to see if he can put a hope to any of this. So definitely this episode made me, you know, get a little bit more intrigued regarding Jing. We got introduced to some of the new Zodiacs for the most part. We got Cheadle. We have the cow guy, which I don't know his name in the manga. I don't remember his name in the anime. So we're going to call him Miltank for now. And for the most part there... All right, there's nothing really too spectacular about any of them as of yet. We didn't really get much characterization, you know, just get a little bit of dialogue here or there from each of them. We got the fat dude that's just like crying. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with him? He has like a, it looks like the UK flag on him or something. I was like, odd. And you can see already that there's some sort of power struggle between Gene and Pariston in this episode because they both want to be, you know, elected as chairman. Although Gene just wants seemingly, it's weird because... When we got the backstory between Jing and I believe it's Bean, the, the little green dude, and he's saying that he doesn't even want to be elected, you know, as the head. And even if he does, he'll resign. It's making me really wonder exactly what is his goal because he tells him a big thing is if he can make his target move the way he wants, he will have succeeded in his goal. Now, first of all, who is his target or what is his target and why does he want it to move in the way he does? There's a lot of questions. Is it that he's trying to find out somebody's motives? Is it that he's trying to figure someone out? It's really making you question like, you know, certain aspects as to what is Jing's overall goal. It's not that he's just trying to have fun with this election. There's definitely more to it. And he also said he wants to continue the will of Netero, which in my opinion, that just shows that at the end of the day, any suspicions anybody might have about Gene, maybe he's dark or anything that's tossed out the one though he's basically saying he want to pass on and continue some a good person's will so you know Nethero's will was good he wanted positivity and Jane wants to push that forward as well but towards the end when we get that pretty much anybody can enter the ballot or whatever and we got Hisoka up in there I was just like finally about time and we got a Lumi coming in into his Hellraiser pinhead looking fucking state I was just like great way to set things up for the future of this arc towards the end it was like oh you got two fucking monsters and i remember talking with friends and just as i was watching the chimera ant saying where the fuck is you know hisoka this is something perfect for him he would love to have strong opponents he's always getting a fucking boner off the possibility of something being strong so where was he and apparently as hard as it may be to believe to be honest with you it sounds real fucking hard to believe he wasn't aware of the chimera ant invasion and he, he had no idea that he was just chasing crawler which how long was the chimera ant invasion for him to not be aware all this time of what was going on and what gone and keto was going through as well and just overall the entire situation i mean wasn't the world in peril and he was just 
chasing after Crawlo, and that makes you wonder as well, did Crawlo get his powers back at this particular point? Did they get the Nen Exorcist to remove the claws that was on his heart? So many questions come to mind as, you know, he was chasing him or whatever. Why would he be chasing him if he didn't have powers unless Crawlo already got back his powers and right now he's currently on some other type of quest? Definitely makes me want to see Crawlo as well, and it just makes me wonder, fuck, where were they that Hisoka had no knowledge of any of this that was going on? And it was funny definitely seeing his reaction to hearing, oh shit, Gon and Kido are about to die, like, you know, that's always been, like, his little fucking project of trying to build them up, and one day facing these powerful opponents, so you can see the worry in his eye when he hears about this. And then last but not least, the setup in the end, where we find out that there's another brother in the Zoldak family, and it's making you wonder, okay, why the fuck is this important that there's another brother, what relevance does he have to, you know, overall the entire problem that Kido is going through right now, because he's going over there, and there's another brother there, so there's definitely a lot of questions at the end of this episode as overall the first half of the episode pretty slow not all that much happening aside from learning about the rules and seeing a little bit of like back and forth between gene and some of the zodiac so pretty slow in the beginning second half pretty awesome a lot of introductions and setups so overall for the most part it was a good episode the first half again pretty slow but it was important to a certain extent to learn the rules and get things down packed second half of the episode just did some great setup so 7 out of 10, pretty good episode for the most part. Definitely would have liked for the first half, though, to be a little bit more interesting and a little bit better paced because it did feel pretty slow for the most part. But again, this is some election stuff, this is some politics, and for me personally, I just don't find politics to be too interesting, but it's the characters around the politics right now that is slightly making it a little bit more like, Okay, let's see how this goes. So let me know what you think. First of all, how can you possibly believe that Hisoka didn't know this entire time that the ant invasion was going down? I mean, most of the troop knew. Also, do you think there's a possibility that Crollo already got the Nen Exorcist to remove the claws off his heart so that way he could continue on? Do you think that's why Hisoka was chasing after him this entire time? Because he got his powers back. And if so, why hasn't he returned? Also, what do you think Gene meant by he's trying to make his target move the way he wants? Is it somebody, something, some way that he's trying to like go? Like, what is it that Gene is after and just overall thoughts of the episode again slow first half not that much second half pretty fucking awesome but that's all i have for this review thanks for watching hope you enjoyed if you liked anything i had to say or enjoyed the video drop me a like i'd greatly appreciate it and if you haven't subscribed you can do so as well that'd be awesome i'm for world and as always people have an awesome day